thing is like somebody who is starting up is just find your niche and it's got to be your passion. It's got to be your heart. Yeah. You know, um, and then go after it with and your whole heart. And then, and then stick with that. Stick right? with that. Just go at no matter how hard it gets. I mean, I can't mm-hmm. tell you how many times in 11 years I just wanted to send up the white flag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, because it's going to get hard. Right. You know, it's going to get hard, but it's worth it. Mm-hmm. It's so worth it in the end. And sometimes you have to go through the fire mm-hmm. to see the beauty at the end. Yeah. Welcome to Little Fish, the podcast where we honor, celebrate, and learn from small business owners and nonprofit leaders like you. I'm Joel, and thanks for joining me today. Today, I'm excited to have Pam Hahn from Hope for Communities on the show with us. Welcome, Pam. Thank you. Thanks, thanks for, for having me. There. Yeah, and your, your official... Um, title is what executive director Correct. right of hope for communities got to get the titles right uh, first i'm not a big title girl but yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe you could make up some other title i don't know but you know, so I, I always like to start just with right away you know what is hope for communities for those who have never heard of hope for communities can you tell us a little bit about what of you course. guys do yeah so hope for communities is best known for our day for hope it's a back to school readiness program for homeless children and those in need We partner the local church with the local schools and serving through the guidance counselors identify families that need the uh, program. And we offer everything from, we bring in uh, doctors and nurses to do their back to school physical as well as a sports exam if they need it. Okay. We bring in dentists and hygienists to do a dental checkup, cleaning instruction and a fluoride treatment and hairstylists and barbers to do their back to school haircut and then professional photographers to do their back to school photo as well as a family portrait because we learned early on many of these families have never had a family portrait done. Wow. And then they get gift cards for clothes and shoes, backpack with school supplies, a hygiene bag with personal care items. Um, But it's basically getting them ready for that first day of school on an even playing field to their peers. Mm. So they show up with everything the child who has everything shows up with. And it pours into their self-esteem. It makes them feel good about showing up that first day of school because they're prepared. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And so they come to a church. They do. So it's a group of families, a group of kids. Um, they come to the church and the church provides, well, volunteers, we'll talk more about that. Yeah. They provide all of that in one day. Correct. Right? Yes. So, I mean, at, a, at a, any given church that they come to, how many kids are at any given church? Um, they range from 75 to 275. Wow. An event. Yeah. It just depends on the church and the size of the campus, this, you know, number of volunteers they're able to mm-hmm. um, bring forward, and then a budget. Gotcha. You know, wow. So, so yeah. that's a lot of kids to do a lot a of things lot for. Of kids. That's great, yeah. though. It's yeah. really awesome. Yeah. So with the, obviously, I'm sure we're going to talk a lot about this as volunteers. You have a lot of volunteers to deal with. Tell us a little bit about the numbers. So um, you started with just what, one church? Correct. Um, wh- when was that? That was in 2009. So we're okay. in, we just completed our 11th year. Um, we started with one church, 200 kids, um, about 200 volunteers, Um, This past summer, with our 11th year, we had um, 46 partnering churches. We were at 17 locations, so there were 17 Days for Hope. Um, We served 2,865 children, and we had an army of about 4,250 volunteers. Wow. Yeah. That's unbelievable. It's insane. (laughs) Wow. That's great. And, and that was all over, what, Sarasota? Sarasota and Manatee. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wow. we're mostly in Sarasota, but we're starting to really gain traction in Manatee now as well. Yeah, that's great. And you work you work with the, the state, I'm sorry, the county, mm-hmm. as far as the families that come in? Is that how that works? We do. We work directly through the guidance council of the school. Oh, that's so they said, identify right? the families okay. um, as either being homeless or in need. Okay. Um, we don't do any income verification. We just totally trust our guidance counselors to refer the families that need yeah. the help. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, really yeah. cool. Yeah. So with, I can imagine, with all those volunteers, there's a lot to, to coordinate. How many I bet you have a lot of people on staff, right? Handling all those volunteers. No, No, really. um, I am full time. And then I have my daughter. She does 13 hours a week, which I need her 40. (laughs) And then I have, uh, we have a temporary part-time person helping us with Manatee County. We were given a grant through the end of the year to Mm -hmm. fund that person. So that's what we have. I could use like three full-time 
employees, really. I bet. Yeah, right, for right. sure. Well, and I think this really quickly uh, goes into the next question I'm going to ask you is like, you know, if you can think of one of your biggest challenges mm-hmm. that, that you've dealt with as an organization, as a nonprofit, yeah. what is it? I would say transitioning from where we started out 11 years ago as more of a ministry mm-hmm. um, outreach or community mm-hmm. outreach to really developing into an organization. Mm. Um, and with that comes administration costs and, you know, things to run the organization. Um, we run it very frugal. Mm. I work from my home. We have donated warehouse space through Goodwill, Minnesota. Um, so we run it really frugal, but there are still costs. Right. So I think the hardest thing for us as a smaller nonprofit is that side of it. You know, we can raise money all day long sending kids back to school. Mm. But that idea of that administrative support, you know, supporting a website Mm -hmm. and a newsletter and printing costs and things like that, I would say is probably the biggest challenge. Yeah, for sure. Because that's really what a staff takes care of, like you're saying, or a good portion of that. Yeah. Not not everything, but. Yeah. yeah. A staff takes care of it. And it's also just that mindset of, you know, every dollar has always gone directly to the kid Mm -hmm. and having to rethink that that we are an organization, we are a business as well, mm-hmm. that we need to sustain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right, because without that administrative staff, and I imagine that's a struggle for a lot of nonprofits, nonprofit yes. leaders, that sort of thing. Yeah, I think the project or your mission field grows quicker than the in-house part of the organization. Mm-hmm. And that's where, if you're not careful, you can get into some trouble. So, yeah. you know, we just try to discern and stay frugal and... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Continue moving forward. Right. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, what about the, the volunteers? Mm-hmm. I mean, how in the world do you manage 4,000 <laughs> plus volunteers across what you said, how many locations? 17. Yeah. In a matter of, oh, that's the other thing we haven't talked about. So this all happens in a matter of a couple of weeks, right? So, so it's, it's not like it happening all year. Right. Well, the preparation really happens all year. Uh, We start in January preparing, um, January through June, and then the events are July and August over three weekends. And then we do um, celebration and debriefing in September and um, a piece called Continuing Hope, which Continuing Hope is such a big piece of what we do because we don't want to get the children ready for back to school, have it be like a one-touch event and never see them again Mm -hmm. until next year. Right. We want to pour into them. So now Mm -hmm. you have churches partnered with schools serving families in need. So you have that triangle relationship and how can we pour in 365 days a year? What does that look like? Can Mm. Can a church host a fall festival perhaps and now invite the entire school over? Can they do Thanksgiving dinner for those families in need or Christmas gifts? Can they volunteer at the school either in a mentoring program or a reading program? Yeah. And we partner with, uh, we have our breakfast coming up on the 28th where we highlight our community partners because we partner with hundreds of community partners locally that are doing great things that we want to collaborate with. Mm-hmm. So we want to work with them and say, hey, they, there are more things we can do mm-hmm. for the families mm-hmm. throughout the year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So with that, you've got all these, all the volunteers. Mm-hmm. How, what What's the secret sauce there, Pam, with like how oh, you gosh. handle yeah. all of that with a very small, almost no staff? Yeah, it's really um, tier levels of volunteers. Okay. So we have, um, you know, at every church location, there's a leadership team. So okay. there's an event coordinator and sometimes a co-event coordinator. And then they have a leadership team under them. They have their medical leader, their dental leader, their photography leader, their meals leader. Okay. And then under them, they have their volunteers. So that's kind of handled on the church campus, mostly Mm. through that delegation of that tier of volunteers. And then on the community level, we have a level of volunteers called liaisons. So I have about 15 liaisons that are volunteers in their specific area. So for instance, my medical liaison is a PA at Sarasota Memorial Hospital. Okay. So she oversees the medical piece at all of the different events. Mm. So that medical leader at say Church of the Palms if they are brand new or they're having trouble recruiting enough doctors or they don't know where to get a particular medical supply, they would reach out to Anne, our medical liaison. Mm. 
So it really helps to have the different tiers of volunteers because everybody knows what their job is, what their responsibility right. is, but it's confined to that and they don't feel like they're spread too thin. Although as we grow, <laughs> that can happen. Mm -hmm. um, we are encouraging our liaisons to build a team of three now that okay. you know we've gotten to the size we have. But really just that and everyone knowing their part and owning it and being committed. And the one thing with our volunteers is they all have a heart for this. Yeah, And right. I think that's important. Mm -hmm. You can get people doing things, but if their heart's not in it, mm -hmm. It's going to be a revolving door of volunteers. Right. And I think um, our volunteers are really are bought in through their heart. Yeah. 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 And it's such a tangible cause, too. Mm -hmm. like what you're doing, you see when you go to an event, you see these kids' lives change like before your yeah. eyes. And so I imagine that that's uh, contagious. Yeah, right? it is. It is. We tell people all the time that you know, I can talk about it, you can go on the website, you can see pictures, watch videos, but until you actually go there and experience mm -hmm. it, get all your five senses involved and actually meet the children and yeah. look them in the eyes and and really watch their expression um, when they receive things or their demeanor change from the time they arrive to the time they leave, that's mm -hmm. when you really understand it, you know? Yeah. And I've had so many people tell me, you know, they've, they've known about it for years and then they go to one and they're like, I had no idea. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I know. That's why I've been That's trying to get you, you to go. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. So, yeah. And so go back to those liaisons a little bit mm -hmm. and that, that setup you had. Obviously, that's how you've been able to scale and grow this thing and yeah. continue to grow yeah. and help so many people. Was that a difficult to let go of as a leader, like the, to, to truly delegate that out? Yeah, um, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> like liaisons just you know, that was created as a way of getting pieces off my plate. Mm -hmm. So with each liaison that we have, that piece pretty much comes off my plate. Now, right. if the liaison get has a question or something, they come they to come me. To but Yeah, but you don't have 100 people calling you exactly. on, the day, on the day of Hope exactly. Saturday or whatever it is. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So the liaisons are huge. I think for me, the hardest piece to let go of as we've grown is not being able to be at all the events. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there, you know, there was a time at the beginning where I would go to every event and I would mm -hmm. meet the families and I would be able to thank our community volunteers that came in and our professionals that came in. Right. And now when we have eight events on one Saturday, <laughs> yeah. um, the most I've ever gotten to on a Saturday is five. Wow. And I felt like I just needed a helicopter to just yeah, like <laughs> yeah, really. take me up over and, you know. But um, I think that's the hardest piece to let mm -hmm. go of is mm -hmm. just... You just want to be involved and you can't wait to see the pictures and hear yeah. the stories. And, you right. know, you want to like you want to hug every single child. But mm -hmm. when you're serving over twenty eight hundred, yeah. <laughs> you can't. That ain't going to happen. Right. So, right. yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. And it makes sense. Like, that's that's why you got into it. Right. To do yeah. that. And you're still doing it, but you can't, uh, yeah. can't reach everybody. Huh. Yeah. I want to yeah. talk a little bit about why you got into it. Okay. Um, so I'm sure that there was a need out there, right, that you mm -hmm. saw. I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, so there was actually a need within my own family is how this started. Um, we It was 2009, and we had a family-based business for 18 years that was doing really well. Okay. And if you remember 2009, that was the beginning of the sliding of the economy. Mm -hmm. right. And we lost our business. Mm -hmm. And so what provided for our three children very well was gone and I was having anxiety about how I was going to get my kids ready for back to school because wow. those who have raised children you know it's not only a time commitment it's a financial commitment right and what provided for us was no longer there mm -hmm. um, with that I was also um, I've done homeless ministry since the age of 13 in New York and down okay. here I was doing um, a Thanksgiving outreach and it, we were starting to see more and more families. It wasn't the man or woman on the street. You was now starting to see the blue collar worker, the middle class family, you know, mm -hmm. kids. Yeah. And that put a whole new spin on it for me that there were kids factored into the homeless equation. And mm -hmm. that was just heartbreaking. And um, my husband and I were part of a small group Bible study that was teaching us to think outside of our box of comfort. My box of comfort was the man or woman on the street. Mm -hmm. My box of comfort was not a homeless child. Yeah. So those three things kind of came together and um, I felt like God was saying, you know, there's more to be done for these families than Thanksgiving. Yeah. And I'm like, what does that look like? And as I was having 
anxiety getting my kids ready for back to school he said how do you think the moms and dads that you go to the food pantry the clothes closet you do thanksgiving for how do you think they're feeling and it was probably my most humbling moment before god yeah (laughs) um because i had no right my kids had a roof over their head they had clothes Mm -hmm. on their body and they had good food to eat and i was fretting over a backpack and school supplies which Mm -hmm. now seems so frivolous but at the time was my reality right yeah so um i was like okay what does that look like and I just felt like he laid on my heart that while I was to get my kids ready for back to school, I was to get the homeless community ready for back to school. And it was kind of one of those funny moments with God because it's like, okay, you missed the anxious getting three kids ready for back to school. And now you're asking me to get what I thought at the time was a couple hundred. Little did I know at the time there was 1,600 homeless children in Sarasota County. Wow. So the number's about half now, which is nice but still too much Mm -hmm. (laughs) we shouldn't have any yeah um so yeah so it came out of a personal need and then as i started asking around nobody was doing it a lot of people are doing the backpacks with the school supplies but to take it to the level of medical and dental and hair and photography and continuing hope and pouring Mm -hmm. into the families that wasn't happening so yeah yeah, so we just started there you just did it yeah jumped out and did it yeah and and obviously it, it at a place where you probably didn't have the money or the resources or anything to do it yeah i always find that really um encouraging when you're like it's, it's a lot of times the hardest places in life those challenges mm-hmm. those you know yeah your world gets turned up upside down that's like the birth of something new yeah it's awesome yeah Hmm. Yeah, and I didn't, you know, that first year, I remember standing at the door with my pastor, Brian, and he said, did you have any idea what it was going to look like? And I was like, no, because this was God's vision, not mine. And um, to look now, I get very emotional, you know, at the events and the planning breakfasts to look around the room and see so many people engaged and involved and so many kids that were serving. And it's like, you know, it's had God shown me that 11 mm-hmm. years ago, I probably would have ran for the hills, but yeah. um, it's just amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just the contagious spirit of serving and helping those who don't have. And, you know, we can all go through struggles, but there's someone going through it harder mm-hmm. and worse off. Mm-hmm. And we just have to remember to, you know, love them and help them and yeah. It's just going to make our community better. I mean, just the idea right. that, and not only because of us, because there's so many making huge efforts in our community that the homeless count is now half of what it was 10 years ago is huge. Wow, that is huge. I didn't yeah. realize that. Yeah. 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 And there, I mean, there have been so many doing so much, you know, Gulf Coast Community Foundation three years ago started an initiative to get every family off the street, out of a tent and out of the car mm-hmm. and partnered with many of us in the community to make that happen. Yeah. And um, it's a good thing because yeah. we're a affluent community. Mm-hmm. We can't have homeless children. Right. <laughs> it's just right. a, it's a sin, you know. So yeah. Yeah. we created Little Fish as a place where small businesses can support one another and build on one another's strengths. And one of the ways that they can do that, and we want to start helping with that, is by releasing valuable content, resources, and tools. And so we're going to do just that over the next few months and into next year. So I want to invite you to join our email list. If you go to thelittlefishpodcast.com and sign up and answer a few questions, first of all, you'll immediately get two free resources that will help you with your business and grow your business, specifically about your website. And then also you'll get notified when new content comes out and releases. So we'd love for you to join us. Go to thelittlefishpodcast.com and sign up today. What about in the... um this kind of, I, I call it, I wouldn't use the word industry, but in what you do, mm-hmm. right? In the overall nonprofit world, ministry world, but maybe even more specifically to dealing with the homeless, what are some challenges that you have seen over the years? You just mentioned some of that, mm-hmm. right? And that it's, that's gotten better and people have gotten better right. at dealing with that. But right. there are some challenges you've seen and some things you guys have done to, to work through that. With the families directly? Yeah, with families yeah. or just with the, the issue of homelessness because that's yeah. kind of your main core issue, yeah. really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Um, the homeless and the needy. And I think the biggest challenge is wanting so much to help. And um, the greatest call that I get every year is that mom or dad that calls and says, I got the invite, but we're good this year. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. that means we're doing something right. Yeah. You know, we're getting them to a better place. I think the hard part for me are the families that 
are still with us 11 years later and the circumstances haven't changed much or possibly gotten worse yeah. and you can only do so much mm -hmm. they have to own it as well um but seeing kids um struggle is really really tough for me um mm -hmm. when i served homeless ministry and it was a man and woman on the street um and kids weren't involved it was like okay if you want to be helped there is help yeah <clears throat> But many don't, and that's okay. It becomes their lifestyle. But no mom or dad wants this for their children. Right. Yeah. So the heartbreak from the parents, and it's just, it's tough. Life is tough, mm -hmm. and it's expensive to raise children and to even, mm -hmm. you know, live in such a community. So, you know, like affordable housing is a huge issue yeah. in our community. Um, you know, better paying jobs is a uh -huh. huge issue in our community. Um, yeah. So you have these, you know, people who are making minimum wage and paying the rents that we have. It just doesn't add up. Yeah, it's you know, true. so you want you want to just keep. I think the heartbreaking thing is you want to do so much more, uh -huh. but there's only so much you can do, and you keep trying to think of more and more ways to help and serve. Um, but I don't know. It's it's going to take an economics shift almost. Uh -huh. um, but we're thankful for those who are making it and are helping. And a big part of Continuing Hope is like you have a church that's come alongside families. And now they get to be almost like caseworkers where uh -huh. like if they hear of a family whose car broke down, do you yeah. have mechanically inclined people at your church that can help? Every right. church has mechanically inclined right. people. Yeah. Um, or a mom or dad who lost their job, do you have retired professionals in your church that can teach that mom or dad how to write a proper resume, how to do interviewing skills, how to mm -hmm. dress for success? Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, because we're trying to provide resources that either one, they don't know where to find, or two, if they're available, they can't afford it. Yeah. So what can we do? You know, I'm constantly thinking of what more can we do? Right. You know? And I love that, that ongoing partnership. Mm -hmm. Such a good, good idea. It's huge. I mean, we hear back from the churches, you know, hey, we've we've found housing for this family or we got mm -hmm. this car repaired or we found her a job or, you know, affordable daycare because we're really calling the churches, I believe, to do what the churches were designed to do. Mm -hmm. Like we're bringing them back to the X church yeah. and it's take care of your own and take care of the community. And mm -hmm. a lot of these families have nobody. They don't have a support system. So to all of a sudden have a church come alongside them and love them. And it could be a congregation of 75 or a congregation of thousands, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And our church is here. So it's just getting the body of Christ to be the body of Christ mm -hmm. and everyone mm -hmm. do their part. Yeah. Because we all have something to give. Right. Absolutely. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah. If you had to go back and tell yourself something when you started, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> what would that thing be or things be? Yeah, that run for the hills. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Um, or maybe another way to think about it too is what would you tell someone else if they if they were getting ready to start something similar to what you're doing? Or yeah. maybe not even the same thing, but yeah. another nonprofit organization or getting ready to start some cause. Or That's actually easier cause. to think about because okay. I've actually yeah. helped some people um, because they know my story. Mm -hmm. I've had people come to me and say, hey, I've got this idea. What do you think? Yeah. And I would say be laser focused. Mm. Um, you know, we all have hearts to do so much and you got to find your niche and do it well. Yeah. So and then collaborate with others that are doing the other pieces. So we know that we do the back to school program like nobody can. Mm. Yeah. Um, it's our signature event, but we don't want to be known for just that. We continuing hope is the reason continuing hope exists is our collaboration of hundreds of community partners. Yeah. Um, so that's you know we we don't want to reinvent the wheel. We don't want to duplicate efforts. We don't want to step on toes. Mm -hmm. Right. We don't want to take away from others. But find your niche and kind of stay in your lane mm -hmm. and just go at it two hundred percent. But don't forget that you're you're not an island. We have a huge community of so many people doing good things. So the more you can collaborate, like in our advisory council meetings, we're always sitting there going, who are we not partnered with? Yeah. You know, so when you can partner with people like 
the Patterson Foundation that's doing the reading mentoring program. Mm -hmm. And they're doing it well, yeah. you know, with excellence. Why would we even try to invent something like that, right. you know? Yeah. Um, partner with Sarasota Medical Pregnancy Center, you know, who offers so many free services to families. We're not going to... We're not going to create that, mm -hmm. you know, but we're going to partner and we're going to introduce our families to them and we're going to introduce our churches to them. Um, so I think that's the main thing is like somebody who is starting up is just find your niche and it's got to be your passion. It's got to be your heart, Yeah. you know, um, and then go after it with and your whole heart. And then, and then stick with that. Stick right? with that. Just go at no matter how hard it gets. I mean, I can't mm -hmm. tell you how many times in 11 years I just wanted to send up the white flag. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because it's going to get hard. Right. You know, it's going to get hard, but it's worth it. Mm -hmm. It's so worth it in the end. And sometimes you have to go through the fire mm -hmm. to see the beauty at the end. Yeah. And, um, and it's a good reminder because I think it doesn't matter whether you have a business or you're working in a nonprofit that is a principle that remains true. Yeah. Right? You're going to have those times where you just feel like, I'm done with this. I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. But, um, you know, sticking in, in your lane, but also like over a period of time, right? Pushing yep. through over a period of time is where you'll really see the the change. And yep. the, yeah, it's a good reminder. Yeah. And for us, the growth has been all God led. Hmm. Um, you know, every time we tried to get out ahead, hmm we were brought back mm -hmm. and it's like, mm -hmm. nope, not yet. You yeah. know, so I try to stay with God's timing mm -hmm. on growing the organization yeah. um, because he knows best and I don't want to get out ahead of him. Um, so sometimes you can get like over ambitious. Yeah. Um, but I, it's all about, and we talk about this with our days for hope when we set up how many kids come to an event. I tell a church, I'd rather you do quality versus quantity. Mm -hmm. So yes, could you have a one touch event for 400 kids? Absolutely. But can you have an event for a hundred kids that you're going to pour into 365 days a year? Cause you probably yeah. can't maintain that 400. So do less well, mm -hmm. right. Then spread yourself too thin. Yeah. And grow slowly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's good stuff. You know, and you mentioned partnerships. It's funny. I've talked to on this podcast so far, a number of nonprofits. And what's yeah. encouraging to me is that everybody has said that exact same thing, Yeah, which is great. Yeah, That means that, that, that many nonprofits, especially in our community, have that idea of like, look, there's other people out there doing this. Let's partner with those people. Yeah. So that's a great spirit of, of not competition, but yeah. cooperation. So I love huge. that. Huge. Yeah, huge. And I think our community does it very, very well. Yeah, I think so. It's, it seems that way. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. and like I said, everybody's brought that up. So yeah, <laughs> almost everybody. Awesome. So that's, that's cool. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm wondering what is it, what does the future look like for, for hope for communities? So what do you, if you yeah. could look into, I mean, I know you're saying, look, we're going to take God's leading on this. And, yeah. but like, if you could dream about five years from now, what do you, yeah. what would you love to see? Um, I would just love to see us be able to have the administrative structure to grow it further than Sarasota County, to mm. really grow Manatee County to the point we need to be in, then to go to Charlotte, to go to DeSoto County, huge mm -hmm. need there. Um, I mean, in an ideal world, I would love to see Days for Hope in every community, yeah. you know, yeah. across whatever. Well, that's what I was gonna ask you, like, is this something that you could envision going beyond Florida and to kind of more yeah, of a national? Yeah, we've had requests both from out of uh, the county as well as out of state, mm -hmm. um, but it takes uh, it takes a starting team. Yeah, that relationship. You know, mm -hmm. um, so I hope to. I mean, I hope as we grow and we can bring on people to continue to grow it, I hope to. I yeah. mean, I think it's valuable. You right. know, um, right. a, a prayer of ours is always that one day Sarasota won't need us. Hmm. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that right. would mean there's Work no homeless or needy a, children. Job, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but they'll be the next community that will need us, right. you know. So, um, mm -hmm. but for now, we're needed. So we're here. Um, but we also know this great need in Manatee County. The numbers are double in Manatee County. I haven't explored numbers in DeSoto and Charlotte yet, but those would probably be the next counties to go into. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, it takes, you know, to do that, it takes hands and feet. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and yeah. have you, when you say um, you've had some other people reach out, have you seen anybody doing things like this 
in other states and have you, um, have you run into that at all? Not that I've heard of. Okay. Um, I've heard like different little like ma- like one touch events mm-hmm. that are doing something similar yeah. to some degree, um, which is great. Yeah. I mean, you know, we've had duplication of our own event done and that's great. You yeah. know, you're serving kids. I just always encourage if you're going to do that, don't forget the continuing hope piece mm-hmm. because yeah. that's where you're going to see life change. Right. You're not going to see life change at a one touch event. Mm-hmm. So, and for anyone who's doing any kind of event, yeah. if you can take it to the next level, pass that one touch event, mm-hmm. but yet pouring into the lives of these families, I yeah. think that's where you're going to see the difference. Cause we don't want to just be this handout mm-hmm. the day of, you know? Yeah. That's so, good. Yeah. If somebody's interested in mm-hmm. either getting involved, supporting, you know, helping with, with Hope for Communities, yeah. what, what do you tell them to do? What's the first step? Um, well, we have a great website <laughs> that you do. Um, and that's uh, hope, the number four, the letter C, dot U-S. Gotcha. Um, yep. And then my phone number is on there as well as a contact and an email. Okay. So I tell people to start there because it really gives us gives a really good overview of who we are and what we do Mm -hmm. and then contact us from there you can even contact us directly on the website you can donate directly on the website and you can even like uh uh, what apply or or request to be a volunteer right and that's all on the churches and all that yeah website guy did a really good job (laughs) (laughs) and are you looking so you're looking for uh what volunteers church partners Anything yeah, else? for sure. Um, definitely church partners, because um, mm-hmm. that's how we grow. Mm-hmm. We look for churches first. So you can be a host where you have a day for hope on your location. You can be a partner where you come alongside. Like I said, we had 17 hosts, but we had 46 partnering churches. So that okay. was multiple churches coming together and serving. Yeah. Um, so churches, we definitely need um, professional volunteers. The general volunteer, we they kind of come out of the woodwork yeah. at every church. So those we feel like we have a lot of, but we, we never say no to a volunteer. But professionals, medical, dental, hair, and photography professionals okay. are a huge need because as we grow, mm-hmm. you know, that gets thinner. So, yeah. um, and we need an army of those to help as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks, Pam. I appreciate you being on the, thank the podcast. Thank you for having and, me. Uh, yeah. I love what you're doing. It's uh, awesome. Thank Keep you. it up. Appreciate it. Thank yeah. you so much. Hey guys, I'm Ryan. I'm the guy behind the scenes and thank you so much for watching the podcast. If you want to watch more videos like this, make sure you click the like and subscribe button. And I also want to give a shout out to 81A Studios for letting us use the facility. If you want to learn a little bit more about them, make sure you go to 81astudios.com. Thanks.